from the depths instant tutorial. It's Jimmy's instant tutorials at it again, and this time I will show you how to make direct input fed uh, Seawiz guns. So, close in weapon systems. Basically, a little sheep cannon that can snipe out big cram shells that are incoming and big missiles that are incoming. Sheep and can save your life. They're better than you think. And that doesn't mean they are crazy good or anything like that. They are, however, a solid system, a great SeaWiz deck gun you can add to your ship that will make you survive an initial cram volley, for example. So normally I would EMP insulate all my turrets, but this is going to be so small we are actually going to skip that for this thing. So they will be easily friable when incoming EMP damage comes. However, it is the thought that these things will be able to snipe out. For example, heavy EMP shells and heavy EMP missiles that are big. And of course to control this thing we will need an all-in-one SeaWiz controller put it in the back of the turret there so it can control it. We're going to use a 2 meter AA mantlet in order to reach all the different corners that incoming shells might come. You know, you might be dealing with cram mortars for example. So as any other diff gun we want to maximize the amount of inputs. In the cannon will be one shot and on each of the sides there will be another one. So that is four around one in that's five shots in total for this cannon i recommend you to have one gauge increaser or no gauge increasers dependent on what type of system we're doing however i'm going to select one of these i'm gonna have a cooler there as well and we're going to add some barrels we're going to add eight meters of barrel because we want this thing to be quite accurate. Basic setup of the APS system, maximum accuracy before fire. Now we can go into this thing, the ammo intake, and set up the shell we want. So we're going to add a built-in shell. This has 12 parts, and that should be quite good for this type of setup. Now we want to be able to deal some damage, so we are going to select a heavy head for this. Then we need it to be extremely accurate, so we do need to have some stabilizer fin bodies. We're actually going to have two of them. Now we should remember to go in here and select the correct uh, millimeters for this shell so we get uh, the right stats here. Down here we have a barrel length for full propellant burn. We will just decrease the propellant a little bit so it is absolutely fine with only six meters a barrel for full propellant burn and we have a good uh, base in accuracy from the barrel there too so we can decrease the length of the barrel a little bit if you think anything is too uh, quickly looked over or uh, not explained in detail that's probably because it's already explained in another instant tutorial so do check around for the instant tutorial playlist so you don't miss any earlier tips Right, so we go in here, we can see this little shell here. We shall assign this and assign to all intakes so that it's assigned all over the place. Very nice indeed. You can do diff CVs with any size of cannon. You can make it uh, 500 millimeters and you can make it base uh, 60 millimeters. However, if they're smaller, they do less damage and uh, well reload faster and if they're bigger they will reload really slow but do a lot of damage and they will also be inaccurate after the first shot. So in my um, experience it's hard to make a diff seawiz that is accurate and decent that's 5, 400, 300 millimeters and usually you want to be around 150, 80, something like that. This shell only does uh, 1898 damage, which is uh, something, uh, but it has 19 armor piercing. And cram shells, for example, uh, have an armor piercing value of 80. So this is just below that, which is perfect. Uh, we would not want to have an armor piercing head on this thing. If we did have that, um, we would have a lot of wasted armor piercing potential since we don't need that to shoot at uh, cram shells. So now we can just test this. 
very nice. Now we can see, uh, if we look at this cannon, we can see that the barrel cooldown is indeed much shorter um, than the re regular reload speed. Um, if our barrel cooldown speed would have been like the limiting factor here, we would need to add more coolers, like in the last diff tutorial, which you should probably check out if you haven't already. So we have now made some basic armoring on this thing, which is great so we can test it out a little bit here. So to make it shoot at the right targets, we will need to set up this little thing, the Seawiz computer. And to do that, we'll need to set up a basic main rule set. The first rule is ignore outside angle of incidence. This is uh, uh, like preset rule. So this is basically the angle a, a projectile comes in at. So we will set it at 30%. So if it's like uh, not moving straightly kind of ish at the vehicle, we will ignore it, which is might as well. The other one is ignore outside. And then we're going to find projectile diameter. If you hover over here, you can see the different sizes of the missiles. And this is basically millimeters. So a cram shell is uh, from 1000 to 2000 millimeters. A missile is from 250. We want to ignore small missiles. And we want to ignore um, medium missiles if we are having a pretty strong uh, Seawiz gun. And we want to probably only focus on large or huge. But uh, medium missiles can be dangerous, so we're going to set this to allow shooting at medium missiles since this reloads uh, fairly quickly. So we have a little range here of ignore outside. So the minimum value could be then 400. And the maximum value is, well, the max, it's 2000. And then it means outside this range of 400 to 2000, we will ignore small projectiles like for example, small missiles, which are 250. Now we are going to add weight. Weight will prefer one projectile over another. So we will say diameter. And we have the range minimum. We can do the same, 400. And then we have the range maximum, 2000, which is the max. So the weight, weight at range minimum should be the minimal and weight at range maximum should be the maximum. And this will make us prefer the larger projectiles over the smaller ones. We're going to add one rule more and that's ignore outside distance. And that's the distance of the projectile. This will make us hit more uh, often. So we will not shoot at projectiles that are too close. So say 100 meters, um, too close, well, then they will probably hit us anyways. And we are not going to shoot them further away than say 800 meters. And this will ensure that we probably hit a lot more often. So we might need to tweak this main rule set, but this will help us choose the right projectiles. And then we can go to the fail safe and change hold fire to switch targets. If um, it tries to shoot at a projectile, it uh, can't and it might switch. And there with some mimicry and some applique panels, we have made this thing uh, look a little bit better. So now it's up to you if you think you want to have a uh, munition warner on this. If it was a larger system, I would want to have it um, for this particular one. I will not have them because this is a very small, um, well, this is a very small diff sieves. So we will basically spam this. And as you can see, I've designed it to be able to sink down two blocks into the hull. So it's time to save this thing and copy it. Something like that. And we added a couple of extra detectors onto the fortress here so that we can test them properly. Here we can see they ignore the smaller shells and they try to shoot at the incoming crams. However, they reload a little bit too slow and all of them are shooting at the same cram shells. For this setup, we would probably want to spread out to which crams they deal damage. When we go into one of these cannons and click Q on the all-in-one sieves controller, we will then be able to see which shells it prioritizes. 
So we're going to add a weight value and select number of CWIS aiming. And then we're going to have set this to 2. So at range minimum, we're going to have a max weight. So if nothing is aiming at it, then do it. And if we have a range at uh, maximum, we're going to have it like negative 10. So if like two of them are aiming, we should probably aim at something else. Now we're going to exchange all these turrets. And here we can see in slow motion, the different shells choose to shoot at different cram shells, because this is how we set them up, to split up and not shoot at the same target. Now I hear what you are saying, these do not work, they're not good enough, why do you even spend time making them? Well. Let's first look at the cost and take the cost in consideration. One of these diff sieves cost under 1000 blocks. It's that cheap. That's as much as a shard cannon or a 20 mm AA gun. Try using these to shoot down incoming crams. Might work, but probably not so well at all. So here we go, this works a tad bit better. And there we see all of the shots shot out of the sky. So uh, this looks like a lot, but these are 36 turrets, count them. So this entire system costs 36,000. And remember when you spawn these on a new craft, you will need to set up the uh, um, inputs, the ammo inputs to the shell you want because it will not be saved with the turret, not in the current version of From the Depth. Hopefully this has been updated so it actually saves with the internal shell, but if not uh, you'll need to select it. So that's basically how to set up a diff sieves. Like this looks pretty majestic and imagine this entire system costs 36,000. Um, a lot of singular, like one sieves turret costs 36,000 if you want to have it like fast fire. So I mean, yes, this is a lot of turret, but yes, this is cheap. Talk about redundancy. And these don't have a fragile ammo clip that will blow up if you happen to shoot at them. Their only weakness is uh, they're not EMP protected. We are actually better adapted to deal with singular shells than to deal with volleys. Uh, to deal with volleys, you would better use a flag system, which I show you in a future tutorial. But that's not a diff gun. In any case, um, if we would be able to deal with volleys better, we could set up a synced delay between these different uh, well, cannons. And that would make it so that it would be more likely for them to hit more of the shells and take out more of the incoming volleys. But everything, as always, depends a lot on what you are trying to face. In any case, I do hope that this DIF series tutorial helped you and that you will be able to defend your crafts with a much cheaper cost than you could before by using this little tutorial. And hopefully you learned something new. In any case, thanks a lot for watching. This is your host, Jim Odesm, and we're signing out. Stay tuned for future instant tutorials.